Well, hello everybody. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to assemble a three-piece tub. Now, they call it a three-piece tub because there's three pieces for the wall section. It's actually four pieces because you got the tub base and then, of course, the three sections for the walls. Um, we don't really use these a whole lot in new construction. Um, most of the time, we're using the solid ones, uh, but every now and again, we do have a builder request these. And if we were doing a remodel or um, some kind of service job, uh, we would recommend using a three-piece tub because you can take them apart and they fit through doors and stuff and you're not having to tear out walls and everything. So uh, let me uh, take this apart. We'll get cleaned up here and uh, we're going to start from the beginning. Now before you get too far along with setting your tub, you're going to want to do your rough-in plumbing. Um, now, we have standards for this. Uh, most plumbing companies have their own sets of standards. Uh, we go 30 inches up off the floor, and then our little tub spout here is 7 inches down from the valve. But we use the little pre-made tub spouts. Now, here in the training center, uh, we've done these, we set these things a bunch, so we've already uh, cut this off. But, like I said, you can get these pre-made. They're already set up for you, and you just uh, put you some... Uh, thread tape on there and screw it in uh, and you're ready to go and then of course you got your hot and your cold and all this is going to be centered on that drain uh, and then you're going to have to cut you a backing as well. Uh, I'm going to take you over here to this other tub where we can get behind the back of it. This one is on uh, an exterior wall uh, so I can show you a look at what the drain in the tub shoe does. Here's one of the other tubs in our training center. Uh, this one is kind of on an exterior wall, but it's exposed so we can look at it from the outside. And as you see, we've got our valve with our backing up here. Now, one of the things I used to do when I was roughing these things in is I wouldn't anchor this backing. I just kind of let it float and let that valve float back and forth. That way, when I dropped in my wall set, uh, I could use the spout and the valve uh, to kind of cut my hole. And uh, if you see, whoever did this one, uh, they cut that little hole just a little too big. But we do use a thing called a dry seal, and that does cover that hole. Uh, I highly recommend those dry seals because sometimes you can get a tub spout won't spray backwards, and you get water all in here. Uh, but down here, this is an example of our tub shoe. Now, on this one, I actually did this one. Um, there was a joist down here. There was a floor joist down there. So I had to swing my drain over to miss that floor joist, which is something you do run into a lot in plumbing. Uh, so that's why it comes down in 45s. Uh, this, you're going to, if you can get to it uh, from the back like this, you're going to want to do this from that back side. Get your tub shoe screwed down and uh, your overflow screwed in really good. You're going to want to put a pair of channel locks on this and you're going to want to have a tub tool and use some uh, pipe dope thread sealant uh, and putty or uh, some plumbers use silicone, but we typically don't do that in new construction uh, because we don't have water or anything to clean up with. So we use that putty. Uh, but there you go. That's an example of how that drain's going to work. Setting these tubs is really a two-man job, so I kind of just left this one in the hole. I don't want to be shuffling it in and out and uh, damage it any more than it already is because we do install this guy quite frequently. Um, but first thing you're going to want to pay attention to is your framing. If you're doing this yourself uh, or if this is some kind of remodel or an addition or something like that, you're going to want to get your dimensions right on your framing. Now, all of these tubs come with a nice little piece of paper, which most of your products and fixtures and plumbing uh, are going to come with a little manufacturer uh, instruction manual thing here. And this does include your dimensions on your framing, so you're going to want to check that out. Now, in new construction, somebody else pretty much does all the framing for us. They're following a plan, and most of the time, they're pretty much dead on with their dimensions. Every now and again, somebody messes up. Um, but you're going to want to check those dimensions before you order a tub or try to install the tub. Because uh, if it doesn't fit, uh, if it's too tight, you might damage the tub. If, if it's too big, you're going to have to fur a wall out or come up with something. Uh, but once you get the tub in here, you've got your rough end stuff um, already set up and done for you. Um, you're going to want to get your level. Uh, a good... Uh, two foot level like this is great. You're going to want to check the back uh, and you're going to want to check these sides to make sure it's level. 
Uh, if it's not, uh, you, you might have to shift it around a little bit um, because maybe it's leaning too far down on the back side or it's lifted up on a corner or something. But you're going to want to check that. Uh, the other thing these tubs come with are these little clips. There, some of them are metal, some of them are plastic. Um, but always follow the manufacturer's recommendation. And most of these tubs, they recommend you use their little clips. Uh, some tubs don't have them. They're going to want you to drill through the lip. Uh, but this particular tub is this really hard composite stuff. Uh, and it doesn't really like being drilled through. So you take the little clips, you'll break them off of that strip. And pretty much they just slide in like that and then you're going to run a screw through it. Alright, so once you get your tub base anchored off, then you're going to start putting your walls together. Uh, and you start with your back wall. Oh, that's something I meant to say. Um, I'm not a big fan of impacts. Uh, this is probably one of the only times I will ever use an impact is when anchoring off a tub or a shower pan or something like that. Uh, a lot of guys like to take these things and they put it on a finished product such as like a chrome faucet or one of those oil rub bronze uh, shower valves uh, and they'll scratch the finish or they'll strip that screw out with it. Uh, and it can be difficult getting those screws. Um, you might have to buy the whole kit just for the screw. So those finished products, those fixtures and stuff, do it by hand with a screwdriver. Don't use your impact, but something like this, we're just using sheetrock screws and an impact is perfectly fine. So let's get our wall set. You're gonna start with the back wall. Uh, and bear with me, this thing might be kind of heavy. wall and side walls too they've got little tabs on them and they're gonna fit down in a little track now here's where some people mess up uh, they'll go ahead and anchor this back wall off don't do that yet you're gonna want to do your side walls and then you're gonna want to anchor your back wall now these walls have a lip here with little dimples all in it. That's where you're gonna run your screws is in those little dimples and yes it gets dusty back here. <laughs> uh, but yeah you'll poke your little screw through one of those little dimples to anchor this wall. Now on this the sheetrock is gonna come down to the top of this lip and it's gonna cover up all that stuff. Uh, but these walls have like a little pin mechanism here and you're going to lock that into that back wall and kind of do a turn and rotate thing to set it. Now the reason why we didn't anchor that back wall and we're leaving it floating, we're going to anchor these side walls first and we're going to make sure, we're going to look down here at the bottoms, these cracks, these gaps, uh, we want that to be tight. We don't want any big gaps where water might get back through there. Um, all these things are different. Each manufacturer has their own kind of system to uh, put these walls together. Uh, but they're very similar. Uh, one of the other things you're going to want to do is you're going to have to... If you can see it down here you're going to have to drill out for your valve. Um, now, a trick I used to do, and I think I said it before over on the other tub, is to leave that back and floating. Now, you can't really do it on this one. You're going to have to measure um, and get it right. But yeah, when I was uh, a young little helper, I would let that valve float, and then I'd kind of just put it up against the back, and mark it, and then uh, drill it out that way. 
but that hole can be kind of tricky. Now, the other thing is, if you're doing uh, like a remodel, uh, where you've torn out an old tub and you're bringing in a new, new uh, three-piece tub wall unit, uh, those walls over time, those framed walls, they might get a little out of whack and you might have to get some shims, some of those wooden door shims, and shim these walls. But you are going to want to check, make sure it's level. Again, now remember, if your base is level, your walls are pretty much going to be right too as long as there's not any junk or sawdust down in the cracks there. Um, but the walls, now you're kind of looking at a cosmetic thing. So make sure your gaps are good, they're not too far out, and then we'll screw this thing off. The last part of the process is going to be anchoring these walls. And you're going to want to start with your side walls first. Uh, making sure that gap is where it needs to be, not too big. Um, you want it just right. And then you're gonna anchor these things off. Using just some plain old sheetrock screws. And you'll do that all the way around the top and then you'll be good to go. And then you won't be back until it's time to trim it out. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative, and I hope you can set a three-piece tub now. Thanks a lot, guys.